was a message that came in like a whisper from nearly three billion miles away, beamed across the solar system by a faint radio signal measuring only 10 quadrillionths of a watt. It took 38 huge radio antennas spread across four continents to pick up the news. And a breathless world watched in awe as Voyager 2 quietly reported the thrilling details about this awesome planet, Neptune, out on the very borders of our solar system, on the edge of deep space in the great beyond. But what messages did Voyager 2 send back to our lonely planet? Did it tell more than the scientists intended? It is written. This is George Vanderman presenting as the answer to your deepest needs, the living Christ. Today, message from beyond Neptune. I've always been fascinated by space, the study of astronomy. So you can understand that I've watched with eagerness this historic voyage of Voyager 2 a four and a half billion mile trek through space on a once in a lifetime route visiting four of our outer planets in our solar system, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and just recently, that beautiful blue orb way out on the edge, Neptune. You see, just in this past decade, a planetary alignment took place that will not repeat itself for 176 years just too good an opportunity to pass up. And what a trip it has been, exceeding the wildest hopes of our top scientists. According to one report, Voyager 2 had sent back more than five trillion bits of scientific data, enough to fill 6,000 sets of the Encyclopedia Britannica. Imagine, it's been an avalanche of exciting new information. No wonder some of the breathless scientific watchers complained in mock frustration, of course, that absorbing it all felt like trying to get a drink from a fire hose. Now, of course, Voyager 2 is quietly gliding out into interstellar space. In not too many years, it will no doubt fall silent. Its weary little generator's too feeble to send any signals strong enough to reach home base these billions of miles away. Yet even as signals cease to come to us from Voyager 2, still will continue to receive messages, timely messages, God's messages, from that grand world of deep space explored so recently by this man-made machine. I've been deeply moved by this odyssey, this magnificent journey. It speaks to me not only of human achievement, which we all salute, but of so much more. Join me today in thoughtfully considering what we can learn from this trip through space. It's impressive to consider what man can do. Voyager 2, what an incredible accomplishment. But you know, the journey got off to a shaky start. Early in the trip, the onboard computer suffered from robotic vertigo. Couldn't seem to even figure out where to aim the craft. Then a computer chip failed, wiping out part of the potential memory. Later, a radio receiver failed, camera platforms jammed. One reporter described the module as arthritic, partially deaf, and a little senile as it approached Neptune. Yet somehow, it all worked in the end. As Voyager 2 approached Neptune following a computer-designed trajectory meticulously planned over several years and four billion miles, it was just 21 short miles off course, the cosmic equivalent of sinking a 2,260-mile gulf put. Well, as the probe approached each planet in turn, gravitational fields first grabbed it, then flung it on its way at rapidly accelerated speeds. Till by the time it approached Neptune, it was hurtling through space at an incredible 61,000 miles per hour. These little boosts, by the way, shortened a 32-year trip into a much more thrilling 12-year epic voyage at lightning speeds. 
and the photographs, those breathtaking photographs of that beautiful sphere. These are a miracle too. You see, Neptune receives only one thousand of the sunlight we have here on Earth. So Voyager's cameras required time exposures as long as 15 seconds. Quite a feat at 61,000 miles an hour. TV cameras had to pan their subject material to avoid blurring. Adjusting with a swivel platform ever so carefully and even rocking or yawing the spacecraft itself to achieve perfect pictures. Can you imagine what it took to direct all that from three billion miles away? Incredible! Yes, we have to salute men and women who have helped turn this dream into a landmark accomplishment of space exploration. The Voyager 2 trip is a testament of vision and 21st century technology. And in the heady atmosphere of self-praise and congratulations, have we sometimes forgotten the power that put these planets there in the first place? Think about that for a moment. Voyager 2 was a tremendous achievement, but so much greater was the feat of setting these enormous planets into orbit centuries and millenniums before our ancestor even dreamed of flight. Perhaps you read the conflicting theories being considered during the Voyager trip. How were these planets formed? How did they one by one fall into those perfect orbits around our sun? What keeps them steady on the course? And how about the moons? How and when were they formed? Scientists were recently amazed to discover new planetary moons, or moons around Neptune. More moons than they'd ever imagined might exist. Who put them there? Then, of course, the mind-boggling vastness of it all, billions of miles. This Voyager trip, a relatively short trip, by the way, at 61,000 miles per hour, that barely touched this one tiny corner of the universe. Scientists predict that Voyager 2, as it continues on into space, will reach the star Ross, 248, around the year 42,000. In 296,000 years, it will come close, for light years close, that is, to Sirius, the well-known dog star. 296,000 years at 61,000 miles an hour? Just to graze the backyard of a nearby star? Again, I ask, who created it all? Friend, when you hear theories about four and a half billion years and galactic explosions and moons formed by kamikaze Martian UFOs, I suggest you look back into this old book for the truth. Even as our human family embarks on this new decade and soon a new century of scientific achievements, the truth on page one remains unchanged, my friend. Genesis 1, verse 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Pretty clear, wouldn't you say? God created it all. All of our planets named so blindly for pagan gods, Mercury, Jupiter, Neptune, these were created by the powerful word of our God. And just a few verses later, we're reminded more specifically, Genesis the 16th verse of the first chapter, it says, then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Yes, man's miracles of learning and exploration only serve to place on a higher pedestal the greater miracle of the Genesis creation story. This grand universe with its stars and constellations and galaxies, billions and trillions of, not miles, but light years across, points to a creator and the Journey of Voyager 2 is a beacon of light illuminating the truth found in that Creator's book, Psalms 19.1. The heavens declare the glory of God. Isn't that clear? And the firmament shows His handiwork. You know, friend, your faith in a person grows when you see what he or she can accomplish. I'm impressed with the expertise, the efficiency, the delicate precision work of the NASA team and all those engineers and computer experts from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. 
I suppose if I needed some work done around my house involving these same skills, I wouldn't hesitate to have some of those top experts come and do the job for me, if they would. Well, let me ask you something. When we see what God has accomplished through His creative power, does our faith in Him grow? Can we trust Him? He put those planets into the place in perfect order. Could He do the same in our lives? He maintains a perfect balance throughout His vast universe, maintaining a quiet peace and smooth running beauty. Can we trust Him to accomplish the same thing in our daily experience with Him? Something to think about, wouldn't you say? Yes, I must conclude that if God can create this beautiful blue planet, Neptune out there, balance its icy rings, spin its eight moons in perfect symmetry, and keep that entire system gliding, and its immense path around our sun every 165 years, I believe with all my heart that he can be trusted with my life. As Voyager 2 ventures over further into the deep heavens now, did you know that it has a record player on board? Actually, a copper disc complete with space-age stylus, cartridge, and operating instructions. Some NASA astronomers tucked it on board on a hunch that somewhere out there some intelligent life might someday come across Voyager 2 and listen to our message of peace. And what does it contain? Well, greetings from Earth in some 60 languages. Our planets, our planet's natural sounds, thunder clapping, frogs croaking, babies crying, the friendly southern drawl of the former President Jimmy Carter. He was the one, you remember, who presided over the launching of Voyager two years ago. This is a present from a small distant world president said. We are attempting to survive our time so we may live into yours. This record represents our hope and our determination and our goodwill in a vast and lonely universe. That was well said, wasn't it? I don't know who that message may ever reach, but you know, every night when I go outside of my home here in Thousand Oaks, California, and look up at the sky, I receive a return message coming from the vast reaches of the heavens. And that message flashing down the other direction comes through loud and clear to me and to anyone else that will notice. God, the designer of the universe, is still in charge. He still guides Neptune and all of our planets in their courses. He especially holds this tiny battered planet in the palm of his hand. He still has plans for this one very special planet, and I'm so glad he does. That's why I treasure this painting you've seen on our It Is Written program, The World in His Hand, by my dear friend Harry Anderson. That's a priceless message all the way from heaven down to this earth and into my home and heart, and yours too. If you'd like to have a personal copy of this beautiful painting, be sure to stay tuned to the close of our program today. I'll tell you how my, you may request your free copy. You know, Voyager 2 has reminded me of another miracle you and I experience daily. I mentioned a moment ago that weak radio signal beaming across billions of miles of space, penetrating our Earth's atmosphere to be picked up on those enormous satellite dishes of the deep space network spread out around our globe. A signal so faint, its power only one twenty billionth of that needed to run your own digital watch. Did you know, even at the speed of light, that whisper of a signal takes more than four hours to make this relatively tiny trip? And month by month, that signal grows fainter and fainter until one day Voyager 2 will glide into eternal darkness beyond our reach. And yet morning by morning, as you and I get down on our knees, and send messages to a Heavenly Father, those signals get through instantly, traveling much farther and faster than even the speed of light, and they arrive crystal clear. Our God's heavenly satellite receives, uh, receivers operate at peak efficiency 24 hours a day to pick up the faintest whispered prayer. Isn't that good news? And His signals as well to you and to me, sent 
from a far greater distance than just the three billion miles from Neptune, compounding in clear as a bell. This grand old book sends me messages, morning by morning, that are as clear and fresh today as when they were first written down on parchment. God sends us messages through his word, to his servants, the prophets, through the quiet impulses of the Holy Spirit, and surely through the book of nature. Again, the heavens declare his glory to me and to you. I'm so thankful today for heaven's two-way communication system that surpasses the most intricate wonders NASA can devise. Do you remember a desperate prayer spoken by the prophet Daniel centuries ago? How quickly did the message get through? How quickly did the answer arrive? Daniel 9, verses 20 and 21 says this. This tells the whole story. Now, while I was speaking, praying, and confessing my sin, and the sin of my people Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord, my God, for the holy mountain of my God, yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen at the vision in the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, reached me about the time of the evening offering. Imagine. Even while Daniel was still praying, the angel Gabriel stood by his side with the answer. And that was only four and a half minutes long. Four and a half minutes long. The same can be true for us too. Our communication with the throne of heaven travels both ways at heaven's high speed. Never once in a, is a message garbled or lost. Oh, friend, have you prayed recently and then wondered if the batteries were dying out? that your distress signals were too weak to get through? Oh, take heart. God, God promises to hear you an answer. You have his word on that. Psalm, the fourth chapter, the fourth Psalm, the third verse, the Lord will hear when I call him. The Lord will hear when I call him. I know, time and time again, here it is written. I've seen unmistakable proof that our God is a listening God. He hears our prayers and he answers them. You see, you see, it is written is not just a television program. We're a prayer ministry tool as well. I wish you could be with us every Thursday morning when our staff has its special weekly prayer session and then every single day in between, lifting up some of the deeply felt prayer concerns of those who write to us. And I wish you could read some of those magnificent letters a young mother overwhelmed by the sudden loss of her husband, trying to make a go of it with three small children. I can't see my way out. Please pray for me. Can you imagine? Oh, my friend, we pray for these dear people right here around the circle, going right around the circle. We pray by name for those precious people who open to us with their deepest needs. And what a blessing we get, my staff and I, as we lift up these concerns, to our loving Heavenly Father in heaven. And now as we come to a close today, would you think with me again about Tiny Voyager 2 as it continues now out into the dark reaches of space? Dwarfed by the occasional planet it passes, it heads now into vast darkness where distances are measured by the unfathomable limits of the light year. It's so dark out there, so lonely, even at 61,000 miles an hour, it's dead quiet. It's empty, but not everywhere. Somewhere out there, my friend, is a city, a real city, a city not of darkness but of light, a city not inhabited by strange, mysterious creatures out of a Hollywood science fiction movie, but by real people, by part of God's family. Yes, I said part of God's family. God is there. Jesus is there. Many angels are there, so are Enoch and Elijah and a few selected others. But that very real city is rather empty for now. Many of its citizens are still surviving on a tiny planet far away, a planet called Earth. You and me, for example, here we are. But one day very soon, we can take that trip, that unforgettable trip through deep space to the city of our God. Can you imagine that trip? trillions of miles, traveling faster than the creators of Voyager 2 ever envisioned. 
Jesus and his chosen friends will, will hurtle through our solar system past those outer planets, past the stars near and far, and finally pull to a stop at this great gate leading to the city at space. It's real, my friend, that city and the trip to that city. I plan to make that trip. How about you? Have you accepted the Lord Jesus as your savior, as your friend, as your pilot for that great voyage through space? Please do it now, just now, as we listen to this. You spoke the words and all the worlds came into order. You waved your hands and planets filled the empty skies. You placed the woman and the man inside the garden. And though they fell, they found compassion in your eyes. Oh Lord, I stand amazed at the wonder of it all. Yet a greater wonder brings me to my knees. Lord, I praise you because of who you are. Not for all the mighty deeds that you have done. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. You're all the reason that I need to voice my praise because of who you are. One holy night you brought your promise from a virgin and promise grew as he revealed to us your heart. And during love displayed throughout his crucifixion and in the dark you tore the grave and death apart oh lord i stand amazed at the wonder of it all yet a greater wonder brings me to my For all the mighty deeds that you have done Lord, I worship you because of who you are You're all the reason that I need to voice my praise Lord, I praise you because of who you are Not for all the mighty deeds Thank you, Kalani. We love that. Shall we pray? Father mine, our hearts have been thrilled and moved as new pages have been turned, new doors opened up revealing more of your universe and your creative power. 
the beauty of Neptune and all your other planets, your creations flung through the far reaches of your universe. They speak to us of your trustworthiness and your love. And today we thank you for your interest in one little planet, our little planet, and for your interest in each one of us. We look forward today to that great trip through deep space and to our home with you in that great city you have prepared. Even so come, Lord Jesus, amen. I have a little confession for you today. When I first saw this magnificent painting by Harry Anderson, it just froze me in my tracks. I couldn't take my eyes off of it. What a tremendous message it shares. The world in his hands. And so today we'd like for you to have a free print of this beautiful painting to enjoy and treasure in your own home. No charge. And I'm just so grateful that we have it to share with you. So please call or write today and let us send your free print of the world in his hand by my friend of many years, Harry Anderson. Now here's the information you'll need. As a convenience, you may request today's free gift offer, the picture of Christ holding the world, by calling our toll-free number 1-800-253-3000. Call right now. That's 1-800-253-3000. Two five three three thousand. Remember, the offer is sent by mail, free and postpaid. You may have to dial the number more than once, but please keep trying. The operator needs only your name, address, and phone number, and the name of the offer, the picture of Christ holding the world. Call toll-free now, 1-800-253-3000. Lines are open 24 hours daily. If you prefer, you may request the offer by writing to George Vandeman, Thousand Oaks, California, 91360. And now the time has come all too quickly to say goodbye, everyone, but remember it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God.